and then we would take the necessary actions through the zoning ordinance amendments to the planning commission um, based on your direction. But nothing would take place until the law is passed. Commissioners, any other questions for Michael Brown? Yeah, this, time. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing, and we would like to have the input of the public before we act. So, what we are looking for is just comments from any folks that are here tonight. Um, should this be allowed in our city or not allowed in our city? We have a preference, whether it be downtown or on the highway. So if you are have a question or a comment, now is the time to approach the podium and state your name. Yeah, Alder Bobsich here. Uh, the only thing I would be worried about is with the downtown area, you got the library, you got kids out there around the library. Would you want to store by the library? And would you want to store, I mean, by a church? Would you want to store by a school? So you sh there should be so many feet, because you have a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of youth activities downtown, especially with the art center down there and the theater at down there. Would you want something to be near the, to be near facilities, a facility like that, where, where, where you have your family together, and what the, fam the families want to do? Uh, have, have something like that next to, uh, say, a library, a school, a church, or any, anything like that. Yeah. That's maybe something to consider, too, about, about okay. where you want to put it. Thank you. Where would you put it, Paul? Where, where would you think the best place would be, if we were to do it? I don't know. I wish it would have passed. <clears throat> I mean, the purpose of the bridge is all in the past. That's what I feel. I know. I know. I don't know what goes with you either way. It's a very hard decision that people are going to have to make. Okay, thank you. My name is Rex Lawson from Waters Meet. I'm just wondering uh, what is the exact description of downtown? We have a map, um, which we have a map here, but it, it, in our general business district, I don't know how the parameters as far as goes. Do you have a particular concern? Well, we've looked at a couple of places. Okay. Well, the only map should be on the yeah. city website. Uh, it's like uh, before the S curve goes into town where the, the memorial statue's at. What's the name of the road? It was Douglas in front of us. There's a female there. Is it the old field pet store down in Milwaukee? Is that downtown? Is that the reference? It's right on the edge. Of, we do have a map that shows the boundaries. You probably want to take a look at that that we define as our downtown district. So if that's the same parameters of what we're talking about here, we do have a map that shows that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on should the city allow us to continue or should we have a representative of downtown? <coughs> Hi, my name is Rich Duncanson. Um, in Bessemer, I actually had the uh, dispensary permit. It was kind of a big issue about six months ago. I actually own a building in the industrial park of Bessemer, and um, I followed exactly the city ordinances of what was needed to take place and where to get the building to do everything in exactly way that the city had set forth as the place for me. Now, after the fact that I had already been issued the permit, they took it away. Now, um, what we're trying to figure out is, one, how many of these permits will be issued? Two, do I need the building ahead of time? And three, will there be a public backlash after the fact? Because I've already had my permit taken away once, and as soon as April 1st flips over, I'm going to get this permit again because then it will be law. I went through the whole appeals court and had the whole thing reviewed, and the only reason why I got my permit taken away is because it had not been written into law yet. Now, do you, does anybody know how many permits will be issued? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're barely starting the process. Yes. We're, at, we're at like not even step one. We're okay. trying to get a public sense of whether or not we should be doing this or not. I'm all for it. You're way ahead of well, this, what we're trying to, we're trying to do. Today. There's a large amount of medical patients in this area, a lot of who move from places where they would be considered criminals, as in Wisconsin or Minnesota, me being one of them. 
And this is a very good opportunity for the community to all help in one spot where it would have the ordinance of the city to say what needs to be taking place in the area. Does it need to be out of a commercial location only or can it be done in the house? Does the growing need to be done in the house or does it need to be in a commercial location? Obviously, state law already calls for the fact that you cannot be 1,500 feet from a school, nursery, church, and so on and so on. So people who are already in those zones are breaking the laws already federally. So that's why my building is not in the use um, I'd like to uh, maybe even take part in, in the uh, zoning procedures of what needs to be taking place for these facilities. Thank you for your input. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else's comment? Hi everybody, I'm Randy, Randy Fuller, Brown here in Ironwood. Um, I've been uh, just recently looking over the bill and uh, and then you know doing things on the internet, doing research. So I wanted to bring up a couple things that haven't been brought up so far. And it's number one that this the bill actually did pass the House on December 12th, 2013. It wasn't going to affect fully until April 15th of 2015. So I, I do understand and appreciate why everybody is like taking steps to prepare for that. Um, but simple and clear, um, you know, this is this is a way to bring in millions of dollars and just to do to the economy for bills and for property taxes. I think everybody is focusing on now, right, the, the zoning and where it should be. I think all that should be on an individual case by case basis, the same as if you're getting an occupancy permit for both, you know, depending on what kind of business you have, it should be taken on a case by case basis. It's a good way to um, make use of some of the buildings that aren't being aren't being used and utilized. And there's going to be more than one provisioning center. Uh, basically, if there was one downtown and it was a retail location, uh, they wouldn't be allowed to have any marijuana leaves or any kind of cartoons on their thing. It must be tech discreet, and they're allowed to do business with every other provisional center. There definitely should be more than one. There should be maybe start with a cap of doing 10 or 20 provisional centers in the area and see where it goes from there. Um, the city of Flint is already, you know, a lot of states down the state, a lot of states down the state are already doing this. And um, the, this law that passed is protecting them until, you know, April 15th, and then everybody must comply. Another thing that hasn't been brought up is that. After April 1st, um, every provisional center must have all their product uh, tested by a safety compliance um, facility. So we're going to need one of those up here too, and at least one. And a safety compliance facility would have to be a uh, clean place, inspected by the health department once a year. They'd have to hire somebody with a bachelor's degree or higher in um, science and you know the, the horticulture science. And the city of Flint is doing this. They started off by issuing permits for a thousand dollars a piece for the people, and then they have additional regulations or taxes and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think it should be super high, but there definitely <coughs> should be a permit involved um, so that the right people are taken seriously, not just trying to uh, leap out at an opportunity that. You know, is obviously it's a huge responsibility. Records must be kept at you know, the compliance facilities and all of these. Um, I I think it's uh, if you ask a lot of people around here, uh, they think it's a good idea. Um, most people don't really even understand uh, what the law is. If anybody hasn't already done, I encourage you to go on the internet and not to bill yourself. So I have a question for you. Um, if um, if, the, if you could put one in the city, I guess I have two questions. If you could put one in the city, number one, where would you put it? And number two, um, this isn't, it seems to me that this isn't the type of place where, you know, if people would go and sort of search out, you, you need it when you need it, kind of like going looking for a hospital or like a specialized service, like if you're looking for computer parts, you search out and find the computer store and go there. Mm -hmm. um, you have to already have a, a card be able to go here and get it right so I mean it's not so much like I mean it, basically what the law is saying is that is that a uh, a provisional center is a commercial entity that is allowed to buy and sell um, 
product in any form from smokable to edible <clears throat> from any caregiver, I mean from any patient in the program to any patient in the program. So basically anybody that's growing still, you know, they could grow out of their house, they could grow out of their building, they still have to follow all the laws that are already in place for that. The only thing this law is changing is that is allowing is allowing um, the cities to regulate how they want it distributed. And I think if, I mean, there's already a lot of cities downstate if you do the research that are doing this, but I think if Ironwood leads the way uh, for this, um, there's gonna be a lot more money brought into the community. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Pharmacology, 
and also uh, studying to be an apothecary. All that goes in together with delivery systems and treatments and everything else. It all goes together. And if you put all that together in one building, then you have something to show. Thank you. Okay. I'd just like to uh, put, I did look at the, the uh, map, the voting map. It's on our city website, right on the line, so you'll have to look at the map to see the side of the line you're probably. Thank you. But it is on the website. We are still in the public hearing point, so if anybody else would like to speak. Yeah.
So we've straightened out a lot of stuff in Watersby through law enforcement and town board. There's still a little contention. Or if things are running this smooth, it is medical. It is care and compassion. This to me looks like people are looking for a good cash cow. That's okay. Look at Colorado, look at Washington. But also look at the problems that they have as far as supplying their dispensaries, as they call them. You gotta know how to do this. We know what we're doing. So if you need some more help instead of emotionalism and we'll walk you through it all. We'd be more than happy to have you come over to Waters Meet. We will walk you through this whole process. We've invited other folks there too. And we do this quite often because then you will see what this is about. And I have volumes of this stuff. And I don't want to get into my tirades because you know where I can go with that. Okay, you can just so, kind of get input on We're just going to leave it that. Should we allow it in our city yeah. and where we should allow it in our city? If you need any help, Thank you for your call. How you doing again? <clears throat> I apologize for losing my voice. Uh, Spencer Ward from Onaga County. Um, I represent the Upper Peninsula Caregivers Association. Uh, we have two open facilities, provisioning centers now. We've had one since March in Watersby with no problems. Law enforcement's been out there uh, twice now. I'm, I'm, you know, they asked us to come out and see what we're doing, and they've been very happy with us. Kind of they asked us, law uh, enforcement down there actually, we worked with them, and they asked us to open the facility. Could you, uh, could you tell me again what the two communities are you We're in Waters Meet. I gave you cards when I was here last time of uh, both facilities. Well, one is in Waters Meet, Michigan, and the other one is in Iron River. I apologize for my voice. Um, is, it, is the one in Iron River in the mall? No, it's not. All right. It's yeah. right outside of town, right next to the Happy Trails. That um, it's a little pizza and ice cream joint, uh, right by the credit union. The most important thing is, is a couple of these guys hit some real good points. One gentleman back in the corner, and then uh, the gentleman with the blue shirt. The state, the law does state that we have to be within a thousand foot of anything with kids, like the older gentleman and somebody else had mentioned. They don't want us to go parks, baseball diamonds, libraries, schools. Anything like that. It has to be within a thousand feet, which I don't believe is enough, but that's what they require. Um, we don't feel that downtown is the place to put it. We feel that it's going to hurt your business. And we actually talked to, um, I, I apologize, we didn't get her last name, Karen. She's with Remax. She owns a couple buildings downtown. Okay, everybody's raising eyes. Nancy. Is it Nancy? Well, we just Nancy. spoke during the lobby downstairs. We had, well, she felt that it wouldn't be good downtown either. She feels it's going to hurt the businesses. We try to stay on the limelight of people. Our biggest thing is, is, um, is uh, that confidentiality. A lot of people don't want to be in visual line. They don't want to be downtown. There's people, excuse me, using you for example, sir. This gentleman's age that are with us. They don't want people to know that they're on medical marijuana because they're embarrassed. But it works for them. And, and we have a lot of people like that. They like the fact is, is that all of our facilities are out, not way out of town, but not in a line where everybody looks down. Um, the one in Walker's Meet, our nearest neighbors are graveyard, and they've never complained once. Um, <laughs> great people. Um, we got into this because one of our friends had brain and lung cancer. Uh, started with <coughs> the brain and lungs, and he's gone now. But that's how we started all this. We truly got into it for care and compassion. We're not drug dealers. Um, if we find people that are with us and we feel our dealing our medicine is drugs, we get rid of them. In fact, we've gotten rid of probably 10, 15 people this year, and we have a list. Um, like the one gentleman in the back corner said about uh, testing and everything, or um, if you open 15, 20 facilities, I can tell you right now, it should turn in this place into it. Please excuse the language, but this can turn into a whorehouse. Um, it's going to be drug dealing. If there's no way to control it, there truly isn't a way to control it. You, the biggest problem with this medical marijuana right now is people are so used to it being a drug and dealing as drugs, that's the way that they all treat it as drug dealing. And that's the stigmatism we're trying to get away from. Interesting that you 
We're just saying don't put it down to in a glass store front. Okay. That's just not what we're looking for. Yeah. Different uh, points of view and, you know, right. should we have it, should we not have it, where should we have it, so I appreciate it. And we already have one in your okay. county. Thank you. Thank you. I guess I have, a, I have a question. So one of the thoughts to having it downtown is that it was, I, I guess, more visible so that um, it could be sort of overseen and, and what are your thoughts to that? I mean, I guess, I, I'm not sure. The, the police can oversee it anywhere. That's the, the, our, our belief on it. Um, we got to keep it out of a residential neighborhood because um, we don't feel it should be. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want five houses and maybe right in the middle. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it there. Um, downtown, you're going you're to turn a lot of people away from your downtown because, it, you know, it's, Let's face it, what, 60% of this country is for this? I don't know. I, I apologize we didn't check into the statistics on who voted for it here. Water's meet was 79%. I believe it was 82% of the Iron River voted for it. Now, I don't know what happened here. I apologize for that. 66 state last. 66? Yeah, 66%. But now that other that other 36% is against it, and they're the ones who are shopping downtown, not the people buying medical marijuana. Thank you. I do have a question. Um, if it were an industrial district, how would you see that? I'm not quite sure what you folks consider an industrial district. Uh, we have we have an industrial area and an industrial park. The industrial park is in the industrial zone, but the whole industrial zone is bigger than the industrial park. That could be a considerable area also. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to actually get on your maps and start working here. We found a couple of facilities today we thought would be fantastic, but then again, it doesn't sound really like you guys are quite ready for this yet. I don't believe that this is going to go through, to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to be passed. Well, I don't think that they figure out how to tax it until they do, I don't believe they're going to pass it. In that case, the provisioning centers that we are running now are legal. Because all we are doing is, is it's a, a safe place for the caregivers to get their patients the medicine. How is and, it that and you'd be amazed how many people we have from your town. How is it that these two communities could have this when the law doesn't exist to allow it? Because we're not a dispensary. We're, we're provisioning center. There's a difference. Now, all, all we've done is given a safe place for the caregivers to meet their, their patients at a generally located facility that's also private for everybody to dispense the medicines. I have a question for you then. Uh, you know, I'm just seeking public input here and trying to learn more myself. Um, could you define what the difference is between a dispensary and a provisioning center? You'll find out that a lot of, well, for one thing, a dispensary sells to anybody. Anybody with a card. And, and, um, and a lot of the dispensaries, you'll find out like around holding and stuff. Right now, edibles and all the oils and everything are illegal, which I disagree with. I believe that they should bring back a lot of that. Well, they're not only selling that, but they're selling colognes, they're selling uh, pipes, you know, they're selling everything. We're, we're, we just do uh, the medical marijuana. We don't allow anybody to use in our facility. We make sure that everybody comes as a lockbox to leave. Uh, we feel that it's no different than going to a bar and getting drunk and leaving. We don't want anybody going and get medicated. What is your relationship with the city government then? In mm -hmm. these two towns, are you They're behind us? Are you authorized by some specific ordinance code? Uh, how do they? Mr. Pope wrote, had wrote an ordinance for water speed. Mm -hmm. uh, we fall under that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the police department was behind us because now it gives everybody a safe place to police know where they're getting their meds and they can start closing down the drug run that they have. Which is here too. And it's in Iron River. I mean, um, Water's well, Meat, Bruce Cross, it's everywhere up here. The chemical problem, like the gentleman spoke about the mouth. And, you know, did anybody hear about the little boy in Ironwood? Or mm -hmm. Iron River in the park, picked up the Gatorade jar and put it to his lips, lost his bottom lip. None of you heard about it, did you? It's mouth. Nobody. Well, we're, we're just kind of, I want to get off. off I understand. I'll just say we are. Thank you. And, and we're also very, very against the chemical problem here. Thank you. I have one more question. It's sort of a general question. Do people feel that were we to allow one or two or whatever, it would be successful? I think, the, I, think, <clears throat> I think it'd be very successful up here, but if you start doing a competition thing, how are you going to regulate it? How are you going to know where, 
ways, and that's what coming from. The gentleman saying having 20 of them up here, you're just starting drug dealing. That's drug houses. It's not. It's not medical marijuana, sir. One of the one of the things that could be an advantage, hopefully, would be that houses. I don't know. I'd like to see them out of downtown. I don't blame you. Smell bad. <laughs> we have two downtown Bruce's and we're trying to get rid of them. We got rid of one already. But the one is, I mean, it's just crazy. We got people that have pictures that they brought to us because we're so remote where we, we grow in our, in our lock facility and everything. We're so remote. They brought us pictures of these guys carrying tubs of pot down the sidewalk to another house to process it. I think that's <laughs> I don't think it's right. You know, a lot of people don't want to see that. I think you said a lot of people don't want to smell it. You know, we, we go to a total different facility from any of our provisioning centers. We only sell our own products, so we know where it came from. We know how it's grown. We know how it's harvested. We don't buy it from anybody else. Um, we have the growth right now to probably produce about six of these provisioning centers, and we are. We have two. Uh, this guy's in the near future to have sex or in, more. In the arrangement that you have these two communities, are, is there just going to be one? Yes, sir. Or is it so far. There could be more? They've never, they've never mentioned that they wanted more. I know Waters Meat doesn't. And I remember was very happy with the way we were handling things. But that's, very, that's pretty new. I remember it was been since July. Um, we worked with Waters Meat for almost a year and a half to make sure everybody was happy. We started with tribal and we went to law enforcement. And then we went to the township meetings of Mr. Pope at one home. And that was the last one. Um, we didn't need any special use permits or anything. You know, and, we're, and we do a lot of charity for the communities, which is good for them. And like Steve is telling me, we're pretty, pretty capable of how we work with these, you know, making these rules and regulations. You know, we've seen what's going on. Hopefully, you've got to get a pregnancy message. Thank you. Thanks for next week. Thank you. Have a good day. I just had one quick question for the council. Um, has anybody in the council reviewed the closest <coughs> municipality with a dispensary permit ordinance? Okay, well, speak for everybody. If tonight we're just having a public hearing to hear, you know, should we have this, should we not have this, where should we have it? Okay, well. The city of Bessemer, which is the very next town in Michigan, has a medical marijuana dispensary ordinance, which it states it has to be in the M2 district of the industrial park. It has to have um, cameras, it has to have uh, bars on the windows, it has to have surveillance, um, alarm monitoring and motion detection, and so on and so on. So just to let the council know that this is the closest municipality that did conquer this issue several years ago, and they made these ordinances to take place in a certain area. And I didn't get asked where I would have the dispensary if it was up to me in this community. I would have it in an industrial park, just next to everything else that's supposed to be done industrially. You know, it's not need to be next to a school on a regular street block. It doesn't have to be in downtown. Just make an ordinance that says an industrial park. It'll help provide money as in um, energy bills, renting out the property from somebody, or in land taxes. Thank you very much. Anybody else who has not spoken yet? Any other comments from the bills passed Okay, well, we'll just go through our schedule to close the hearing and start our regular meeting. I used to order it.
approval of the consent agenda. Are there any changes that we need to be aware of? There's two changes. The consent agenda? All of the consent agenda. Okay. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion by Commissioner Seno, second by Commissioner Seno to approve the consent agenda as presented. Any further discussion or concerns on this item? Mm -hmm. Roll call. Seno? Yes. Sim? Yes. Tower? Yes. Corcoran? Yes. Item D is my understanding that we need to remove item D. Is that correct? That is correct. Item E, approval of the monthly check register report. Thank you. Uh, just to touch on the interim expenditure report and look at the capital report uh, for the quarter ending September 30th. Uh, we'll be about that. Uh, that be next. Mission meeting will be able to get a check register report is, is here before you. Correct. Okay. So 
So you are coming to the commission to take a look at uh, paying your taxes twice a year versus once a year? I'm talking about my real taxes. Real property taxes? Correct. Okay. Um, I pay real property in Iredell County and I have the option to uh, pay them both at the same time. Paul, is this something that you are familiar with? I guess I'm not clear on what we're being asked. He wants to pay his taxes once a year. He would want to combine the two tax bills. Not necessarily combine them, but um, have an option to pay both at the same time. Okay. Maybe I'll, I'll try and address the, the, what you're asking. Um, Thank you. Here at the city, we have um, taxes that can levy twice a year, summer tax and winter taxes. And the millages for those tax bills are approved at different times of the year. Uh, the majority of our taxes are on the summer tax bill, approved prior to July 1st, and we get billed uh, on July 1st. The winter taxes, the uh, majority of them are county taxes, and those county millages that go on the winter tax bill, which is levied on December 1st, um, are not approved until, I believe, late October. Um, so we don't have the villages approved by the taxing entities to put on our tax bill prior to December 1st, I mean, prior to July 1st of each year. Um, would there be a possibility of doing them both in December? Um, that would create, um, from a finance standpoint, a cash flow issue. We start our fiscal year in July 1st, and having that money billed and collected right at the beginning of our fiscal year um, helps a, a lot financially. Um, I would strongly recommend not um, doing that. Well, can I ask why we need this to happen? Well, in the winter time, I pay for heat, and it's harder to for me to pay my taxes in the winter. And I um, made a suggestion with the water. Uh, department. They, um, when I pay my water bill, I ask them if I could I add a little bit to my water bill every month. And so um, when my taxes came to it, they have the money already in their office, and they said, "No, we can't do that." I mean, you just you know you have your personal responsibility to take that money then and just set it aside. And, That's true. You know, I mean, it's the same thing that you're doing instead of the city doing it. Well, does it look like um, this would be um, a point where we could meet this person's request? Thank you very much, Paul, and thank you for approaching the commission. <laughs> um, item H, citizens so wishing to address the commission on items not on the agenda. Do you have anything? Okay. Presentation with Michael Brown, Community Development Director, update on the comprehensive plan and community and economic development.